Hi, friends, and welcome to the show. Do I have a treat today for you or what? <laughs> I am bringing you a really special person to me. I'm bringing you someone who, that if you're a regular follower of mine on LinkedIn, you likely know him well also. So today I have with me, I have with us, Mr. J. Andrews. So Jay, those of you who know, he is my life partner. He's also chief business officer of LHR, my business uh, and brand. And I wanted to bring Jay to you today for a few reasons. And we'll get into that shortly, but let me just kick things off by reading a brief bio for those of you who are new to Jay. So Jay Andrews is a speaker, thought leader, and the founder of Ripple Effect a company which creates social media campaigns, marketing and branding for small businesses and entrepreneurs. Tapping into the soul and minds of his clients, he designs a unique and powerful blend to create the perfect client presence and awareness to the world of social. With an educational background in film, marketing and management, he combines over 25 years of experience in the media and marketing areas. Jay continually brings his experience of connecting, collaborating, and out-of-the-box thinking to help positively affect all of those around him. Jay, welcome to the show. Thank you. I am actually, you know, I have been on the show before, but I have to say, for some odd reason, I'm just a little bit nervous. Imagine that. that you odd. are. Yeah. This is, I think, your third time on the show? I believe I so, yes. I believe so. I'm going to ask you a favor right out of the gates. And so I'm glad that you're my guest today. I'm going to ask you a favor and I'm going to ask for a favor as well of our listeners. And the favor is when I, can you see if I mute my mic? Are you able to see that when I, I do that? I, I, I visually can't see anything. No, you can't see that. So for those, uh, for those listening, I'm like struggling big time with allergies today. So every now and then, Jay, I might actually be counting on you to take the mic <laughs> as I mute my mic to sneeze. So if there are awkward moments of folks on the line, that's likely what is happening. So I just wanted to kind of clear the air for my sake, for nothing else. So Jay, one of the reasons why I wonder I hypothesize if you're a little bit nervous about to today about today's show is I <laughs> I am going to take some of this credit. Uh, I have been um, stretching you to talk about a thing you've been doing for me since my business started that you've been doing for others behind the scenes for years, but you've not really been putting out there as a thing you do. And so what I'm talking about here, friends, is Jay's expertise and talent in the social media branding and marketing realm. And so that's why I wonder if you're a little bit nervous. Um, it's funny because I actually am that person that, that can get in front of hundreds of people and act like it's everyday occurrence, right? And not, and not matter. Um, but yes, I, I am the behind the scenes person and um, I thrive in that area. And um, I, I, you know, I think for me, a lot of the time is, is that I, I really, really enjoy seeing other people and or businesses really um, elevate themselves and get to that area that I believe that they, I know they can achieve and reach. And knowing that I'm, been had you know behind the scenes and i've had an impact in that it, it fills my bucket it makes me feel good right so it, yes it is a little odd that now i've been pushed forward it's like the background singer and now you're, you're told to get up to the mic and now you need to sing so well yeah this is an area i think that um you can make a really significant people in small you know in other businesses for entrepreneurs and for other small businesses who are trying to navigate the difficult no, it shouldn't be difficult. Sometimes it's a new and difficult world for individuals. And sometimes it just is just overwhelming. It was just too much work. Yeah, I think, and, sorry, go ahead. And this is where I want to see 
I want to see you. <laughs> I know that you thrive in. I want others to know about you. I want others to be able to learn from you. I want others to be able to hire you. I want others to be able to work with you. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah, no, I was, gonna, I was going to say is that um, it is. You are absolutely correct. When you're working for a corporation, the scariness of going into work don't get me wrong. Every time going into work, it can be a bit scary. But that all being said, you have the blanket of a business around you to comfort, take care of you. You don't have to put too much effort in. Just kind of go in, punch the clock, do what you're told, or fill whatever it is that you need to be filling in your job title or role. And you get to go home and do it all over again. But when you're an entrepreneur and you own your own small business, there is a lot on your plate. And one of the biggest things out there is your branding, your marketing, how you are going to show up in social media. You know, we lived in a time where it was newsprint, radio, and TV. Um, you could throw magazines in there if you wish, or, you know. But now with the dawn of computers and, you know, cell phones and all these other handy devices that we have, um, it has really, truly changed how one presents themselves or wants to be presented their business or them as an individual. So um, this is what I do. Um, I get in there and take that off their plate, so to speak. So I would also um, just wanted to, to share that there's another thing that I want to talk about on the show. And I did give you prep and warning for this because I wanted you to be able to think of some of the key influences in your life and it relates to books. So two unrelated things, but two things that I know both of us love. I don't know if I love social media. I love to hate it. Maybe it's a necessary evil for me. Anyway. I think it's a love hate relationship. With you. <laughs> it's probably a love hate relationship with me. So I'm thankful that I have you in my life to take care of, to master that for me. And then jump into books. So those regular listeners know that I love books. And um, I just wanted to explore some of that with you. I want to maybe um, start or continue on the social media branding and marketing vein for a little bit. And I'm curious to know or curious for you to share with our listeners who, because I know I've got a lot of listeners who have their own business. They're either entrepreneurs or small business owners. What mistakes do you see people making? Is there a top sort of a top list of top three? Yeah, for sure. I think the, I think the first, one of the first things is that it's like anything, we all get caught up in the glitz and glamour of all these other ways people advertise. And then we feel that we can do the same thing. Um, it's not that easy. And then you get so focused on that, you actually lose sight of what you were trying to promote or lose sight of who, why you were doing, producing, whatever, in the first place. That's, that's pretty big. Another huge thing is, is that there are so many platforms which you can be part of on the social media platform. You know, there's Twitter, there's uh, Facebook, Instagram, uh, LinkedIn. I mean, I'm sure I'm missing a whole bunch, I guess, Snapchat, whatever, whatever the platforms are that you want to push yourself out as an individual or as a business, small business, each thing has its own metrics and how it works. And if you constantly put out one type of image all the time, it may not reflect in the metrics or the numbers on each single platform so you might excel in you know say on facebook but then you find yourself crashing on instagram or you have this great following on twitter but then there's nothing happening on you know snapchat or what, whatever the platform is great great uh community within the link within linkedin but it doesn't transcend into other things and what happens is a lot of businesses literally like this for anyone who's watching this mug. Okay. It's love. It says on it, it's by life is good. They take this exact thing and they put it across all the different platforms and you need to tweak it. You need to change it. And uh, that's one of the biggest mistakes 
Um, and the third, I would say, is um, it really does come down to um, being true to your brand, being true to who you are. Be don't get, I find sometimes businesses out there or individuals, they, they're focused but then the next shiny object comes across and it gathers their attention and they just kind of start going left or right of where they were. And sometimes you can veer off so far, of course, it's very difficult to get back on um, because you've gone too far off. So it's really being true and staying focused of, and not being distracted by the shiny objects that are around you. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, those, 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 those are all, that's all great commentary. I may have missed the difference between the first and, and the third. So I'm just going to comment. Uh, I just want to recap the two strong ones that I heard. And then if I've missed something, let me know. Sure. I think this is so important for people. Um, so the two main takeaways I got were uh, mistakes, were that people don't tailor their message to the platform and they don't or a, mist, a common mistake is not staying true to the brand. Right. And, and, and those are true, but, and the other, and, but the other thing is, is that you can't, you can't, okay, I shouldn't say you can't. We can do anything we want if you put your mind to it. Um, but if you think you're gonna come out and, and be the new Nike app or the new, sorry, the new Nike shoe or whatever it is, and you're gonna follow their ad and you're gonna do exactly what they do, there's a lot of money that goes into that and there's a lot of different things. And you, for me is that if small businesses are trying to compete with something that's bigger, has more financial backing, all these things, and they're trying to create that image. And right. there's nothing wrong with that. If that is your goal to eventually create something like that down the road, go for it. But to be right out of the gate and think that you're going to create something like that and then the, the self-doubt, the, uh, you know, oh, I did, they're not putting enough time into it. They're like, well, I don't see um, all the benefits within 30 days or something. It takes longer than that. And especially when you're jumping onto a platform when no one knows who you are. There are, um, there are a million voices screaming out there to get everyone's attention. And you, but that being said, everyone has a unique voice. And you do have the ability to be heard. You just have to be creative okay. in how you present yourself. Okay. So let's now, on the flip side of that, perhaps some individuals have recognized themselves in some of those mistakes. Totally fine. Totally normal. That is what happens uh, during the process of learning. Um, what, are some, what are some top tips then? So three top tips to really stand out as a as who you are right as your brand on social right be be very number one be very specific on what you want what you want to accomplish that has to be number one so if you're on linkedin you're trying to build a community uh connections of people that can either help your brand or you can learn from make sure you're you, make sure that's what you're there for um, I think what happens is, is people are doing that, but then they're trying to do a sales pitch or they're, you know, streaming off into areas that are not even remotely beneficial to what your brand is trying to do. Um, so for me, it's staying focused and understanding the platform that you're building on and that, or where you're trying to succeed in. That would definitely be number one. Okay. And then after that? Anything else that stands out? I, I feel like there's there's so many out there that, that one can fall into the trap or fall into, but I believe every successful business out there, if you're not having someone who's hired to help you navigate mm -hmm. and understand what you're trying to do, you're going to make those mistakes. And hopefully it doesn't financially hurt your pocketbook too much, but you'll grow from them. And so my recommendation is it's kind of like, having a life coach or having a business coach or something, I strongly recommend people having those things because we don't have all the answers and it's good to bounce something off and get another perspective from somebody who has expertise in that area and having someone to take care or have a voice for your branding and marketing is super important. For me personally, it's really getting to know the individual 
and understanding the why behind what they're doing, and then coming up with a game plan, a strategic game plan on how things are gonna roll out. Is that you don't just say, we're gonna sell LHR mugs and then just grab a mug and just go out and do whatever. No, there's gotta be a, there's gotta be a format or a plan in place so that it looks authentic, genuine, and seamless. And um, because people will see through that. And that is a big, big, big no-no out there. If you're not, and people say, well, it's a no-brainer. Of course, I'm gonna be genuine. You'd be surprised. The authenticity and genuineism of people um, sometimes. Well, it's sometimes um, hard to translate that, isn't it? If you don't know, is that a vacuum in the background that I keep hearing? Um, I'm not exactly sure what it, that sound <laughs> is, but it is just, it is annoying the crap out of me, so. <laughs> this is live radio, friends. This is what happens when you have a live show uh, and, and don't, uh, you know, life's and, live, and, you've heard me say. <laughs> yeah, and, and you're in a residential area. I mean, you've got homes everywhere. You have no clue what's going on. Because <laughs> it keeps, anyway, yeah. Thank you, COVID. Need... <laughs> Sorry? I said, thank you, COVID. I know. I just had to call it out. And I wanted just to apologize to listeners. We know that that's happening. Um, but live radio, this is what happens. Um, I like what you said, so much of what you said. Um, a few of the things that I took away that I just want to reiterate to our listeners and what I heard is, um, so these are the strategies to, to excel in social. Mm -hmm. So it's to stay focused and be specific on what you'll want to accomplish. Secondly, you said tailor to the platform. Correct. And then thirdly, higher external expertise. Exactly. And, and the thing is, is that if you find the right people, they will work, for, they will work with you. So make sure that you follow like the interview process, do, do your homework and don't be caught up in someone's website. I'm telling you right now, anyone can build a website. Anyone can say anything they want. Mm -hmm. um, sit down and have a conversation. Have a conversation over coffee. Like create, we live in a world of Zoom now. Have that visual one-on-one. -on -one and, you know, this is where you're going to find out, yes, this is a person I can work with. This is the expert I can work with. Um, too many times there's, we, again, it's the, it's the shiny image, the shiny ball, like, oh, I'll go with this. And, Sometimes it works, but more often than not, the disappointment is huge. And, you, yeah. and you're like, I don't understand why. And it's because you've really got to, you know, get, get your feet, get your hands dirty. And then once you've got that expert in your corner, then you have the opportunity to say, okay, I, I'm in good hands like all state, if I can use an expression. <laughs> like that, right? So, um. I want to just say one more thing and then certainly feel free to, to, to jump in, chime in as well uh, after, before we move on to, the, to the, the book conversation. But I wanted just to share that, to, to be really honest, if I didn't have you already in my life, I'm not so convinced I would have hired someone to do my social because I thought that I would, could, would just be able to take care of it myself. And if there are listeners out there like me, what, what would you want them to know about that? I'll say in response to that. I, I think people have this misguided information that it's easy. Mm. It's not. <laughs> and it's not. Uh, it seems, to do it right. Right. You know, anyone can grab their phone and get all these free apps that are on their phone and, and, and you know, and put together a video or, uh, you know, a collage or something. But there's something that's tangible, having someone who knows what they're doing that can do it for you. Um, it, it's, it's really, you have to kind of experience it. Can you get away doing it yourself? Absolutely. But you have to make the decision on, do you want to? Do you want your brand to look like a high school student is out taking photos and doing whatever, or do you want something that, if you're in front of ten thousand people and you're at a convention and you know 
when someone approaches you and say, I've, saw, I've seen your social platform, that's amazing, your branding, your marketing, what have you, chances are you've, you have somebody in your corner doing it for you. So the reality me, is a lot of people probably wouldn't say that though. They're like, no, they would no. just say, I like your so I love what I see on social. Right. right but, and that but only I mean, happens when you've had this strategic game plan that then is shares your authentic voice and it's seamless. And these are your words that you were describing earlier. And I really liked it that it's authentic, genuine and seamless across platforms. Like that's the experience that working with an outside person gives you, I guess is what I was trying to get at. Right. Like how many times have we as consumers see something and we're like, wow, like I really trust what I'm seeing or, or it feels so, it mm. feels so genuine. That's the authentic because the thing is being authentic. It's not, um, it's not artificial turf. It's real grass, right? You know what I'm, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And uh, authentic is neat. Uh, it's an, I feel like it certainly in our circles, it's an overused word but I think it's because it speaks to its importance. And in doing research for my, and, and, and prep for my book on humanizing leadership, I talk about the importance of aligning your will, your words, and your way. So the three W's, because that's where we really get lost. One of those often. So for, to be authentic, those three things need to be aligned. So your will or your intention, mm -hmm. your words, what you say, and then your way, what you do. People who are not who don't come across as authentic are not asses. <laughs> not usually usually bad people. But unbeknownst mm -hmm. to them, one of those W's is out of whack. Mm -hmm. All that to say, when you align from a social media perspective with your business, you don't want to give that un inauthentic inauthentic yeah. uh, presence. And I just think having an external person is the, is the way to go to make sure that that perspective, you, know, you don't have blinders on. Right. And you're, abso and you're absolutely right. If, you, if one of those three W's to your point is off kilter in your marketing or branding of how you want to show up on social media, it's going to be a car wreck. It's it, it really, it, it, people, people will see through it and it will not come across genuine or authentic. It won't. To your point, it's an overused word, but I think if you, if in the context, if you if you're really using the word correctly, it has meaning and people will understand what you're saying. And I said I was going to move on, and I will shortly. But I wanted to also just really <laughs> we're, we're, know. you're switching gears. Okay. I know. Uh, the point of this is not to have nice social media presence. It's to draw. It's to drive business. It's to drive business. So. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, that's what you do for people is, yes, you make it pretty and aligned and looking good and real and genuine, but you need someone, um, either to oneself or hire someone to really do it to, dri to drive business. At the end of the day, it's all about numbers and you want the metrics to move. And, you know, when I sit down with people and clients, like I, I one, of, one of my big clients right now, it's a, it's a golf course. And, you know, we sat down and like, what are the metrics? What are the, what are the things you want to be looking at? And they showed me the numbers and I'm like, so where do you see yourself four weeks, three months, six months? Like what, what are you personally as a business looking for? Now let me get to understand the mind and the soul of what this business is and let's make it happen. Reflect and that in what you put out on social. Absolutely. Yeah. And um, anyways, so far their campaign has been off the charts. Numbers are through the roof and it's been great. And when you have a happy client, that's what you want, right? <laughs> and just to qualify this, like uh, through the roof is increases by 300%. So Correct. Just, I realize I'm just throwing out a number and not stating more specifics, but I don't think we are in a place to necessarily do that. But we're talking like really, really big numbers uh, in, 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 uh, in increasing. Okay, so we're going to move gear, shift gears. Are you sure? Yeah, for real this time. You sure you don't want to go back on and keep talking about no. the same topic? No, I really don't. <laughs> <laughs> um, I want to talk about books. So yes. I know books. that you have a few books in front of you. And so those mm. listening, you, we will make sure that we describe what's in front of us. Um, but you can always pop over to my YouTube channel once um, the show has aired. Um, and you can 
well, the show is airing. It's air, it gets posted usually in the afternoon of the show's airing. Uh, yeah, you can just have your lab, just have your laptop with you on you Amazon, the books. And, and then just and it's far more fun. Books. It's far more fun to see us at play here. So, what do you have? How are we going to do this? How do you want to do? How do you want to introduce your books? So, I think um, I had uh, I had a great opportunity to speak with a gentleman by the name of Doug Thompson, um, and we got into a conversation about and Doug is like a TED talker and he's you know he works with Microsoft and anyways great gentleman and uh, you'll be able to find him on LinkedIn for anyone who's out there but um, we were chit-chatting about books and as you know the more you read the better you become it's it, it's proven I'm sure you being Dr. Reed mm -hmm. uh, can prove that the science is true on this um, but we were discussing that we have gone through a phase or continue to go through a phase about how to books, how to do this, how to do that. And there's nothing wrong with those books. But for me, the biggest pivot, and I've noticed that's helped me um, in the business world is actually reading books like biography style books. Um, it has really, really, really helped me out, whether it's in regards to an organization or an individual, but he's really helped me. So um, that's where I, that's where my main core so far recently have been the books I've been reading. So not okay. all how to business books, because I've done that. Um, now it's more of um, here, I'll blend the two together for you. I blend soul and mind of the people, my clients and bring them together to form a pro a help them produce a product. So for the longest time, I was reading all the mind books. Now I'm reading books about soul and I'm being able to combine the two. It sounds it. very familiar. <laughs> I, I wonder if it's sort of a normal evolution of being on this planet for a little bit, you know, for a few years. I wonder if this is, you know, we, we talk about the wisdom of older generations. Um, I wonder if that's how, you know, we're on, we're on, <laughs> we're on that path of becoming more wise and recognizing that it's not so much about the doing is important for sure, but also the being. I, you and I have talked about that before about the importance yeah. of not being just being a human doing we're a human being. Exactly. That's and huge. It is. It is huge. And I certainly lost that part of myself for many, many years. Those, um, again, who listen regularly know that part of the story. Um, but the integration of the two is where the magic happens. Correct. All right. What book did you want? What has been a, a, an influencer for you recently? Um, well, the one I just finished reading a while ago, um, and I believe because of the current temperature of not only the globe as a world, um, but especially in the United States, I think it's super important that um, there's a book, an autobiography, and I'll hold it up right here. It's uh, the Jackie Robinson autobiography. And the title is, I Never Had It Made. So for people out there who don't even know who Jackie Robinson is, um, he was the first um, black player to ever play in Major League Baseball. And they called it the Great Experiment. And um, so without getting all in that, the, people say, oh, it's just a baseball book. And it's not. It really, it, half the book talks about his baseball career and his upbringing and so forth. But the other half of the book is about like all the injustice and all the crap that was going on within the, within the social structure of the United States when it come to, um, you know, black Americans and, you know, in anyone of a minority background, it really comes to um, front and center. And Jackie Robinson, you know, when he was in baseball, 
was over, you know, over 50 years ago. And some of the things within the United States hasn't, the needle hasn't moved that much. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, so I think it's really important, um, and especially here in Canada, we ever look at every country has got its own issues. Um, and Canada is, is no stranger. We have indigenous and other issues with our own country. Um, but uh, I just think it's a, it's a, it's a, I would call a must read. And uh, it would change, it will change your thought process even when it comes to how you show up in business. Let's just put it that way. Um, it expands your lens or uh, changes your lens or exp expands your perspective. Right. And, I, and, and, you know, it's like, like uh, some other books, like I, I a while ago, I read um, Joe Madden was the former uh, Chicago Cubs uh, manager. And uh, it's his story. And this title of it is called Try oh, Not to second. Sleep. Wait a second. Wait a second. I want to turn. All right. I just finished the title. Okay. Try not to, <laughs> try, try not to suck. <laughs> Anyways, uh, but it, I, it, it just this for anyone who is an entrepreneur who will have getting into the business world and dealing with other people and perhaps pulling you together a team. This is a must read. It does talk a, a lot in obviously with the baseball analogies and how baseball works, but it is so integrated is how to deal with people and how to be successful and what it means to be successful. So for me, it's very apparent that people should read that. So on to you, Miss Reed. You didn't just read the title. You gave your whole... Story. Yeah, because you're gonna get the talking stick and then that'll be it. No, I'm gonna go back and forth. How many do you have there? How many, do you, how many books do you have there? Um, I have about four more. Okay, so you have more than I have. I'll, I'm gonna start with um, and I was struggling with whether to start with this one or end with this one, but I think I'm going to start with it because it's really been a transformational book for me in recent years. So it might not be a surprise to you, Jay. It's Big Miracles by Joanna Garzilli. Um, the subtitle is The 11 Spiritual Rules for Ultimate Success. And you and I, I think, have talked briefly about this previously when we were doing Chime In Tuesdays. This book literally jumped off the shelf to you. Yes. At the yes, I, I, I had read it before you did. Well, no, I'll clarify that. You started to read it and then I started to read it alongside you and you told me to get my own, which I did. <laughs> yes, because you mark up books. I do. I love my books. That's how I show my books love. I feel as well like I, it's showing respect and to the author and authors might actually totally disagree with that. It's like, I want to show how much I love the book. Um, and this book was transformational for me. It's hard to really be able to sum it up as to why. Um, it obviously came to me at the right time. I was really needing to move forward with strong action in my business, but also needed to understand how to do it in a heartfelt way that didn't feel really woo woo and I didn't I felt like those two worlds were were worlds apart that those two things didn't really coexist within me but I was coming to that point where I was recognizing I need both mm -hmm. and this book the way Joanna wrote this book is heartfelt extremely spiritual but also very tactical and very of this physical world you know we live in a physical world we don't live in a world of just, um, not just, I shouldn't say just. We don't live in a world of woo. I think I like, I like the woo, but I also want to understand how can I still live in this world with some woo? And this is what it brought to me. It also really simplified things in terms of how to take really strong responsibility for all areas of your life. And if you excel in, so the four areas of responsibility, if I remember correctly, uh, finances, health, career, and relationships. And one of the things that I walked away with from the book is that if any one of those gets too far from the others, whether it's too far below or too far above, 
So if you start to excel too much in your career and you leave, you leave the others behind, you're on a path for destruction. It totally makes sense. Those yeah. listening will be like, yeah, of course. But I don't know if we really look at our own lives like that. So that was, that was no, my... I, 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 second, I second the book. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a phenomenal book. When I have uh, coached clients, it's the first, one of the first books I tell them to purchase. And I buy this book. Uh, and then now I'm going to flip to a totally different kind of book, a book that you were mentioning that you don't seem that you read earlier in your, uh, your career and in, in days of uh, management and leadership yourself. Mm -hmm. But I still think it's really good. So Patrick Lencioni is a business author and he's got a whole bunch of books and I love his books because he read, he writes them in uh, fable format, super easy reads. And this one called Death by Meeting, I mean, that just tells us it all, doesn't it? Um, I don't think he needs to explain, do much explaining that meetings are dreadful and often uh, a big time suck. What he does is about, goes about solving the problem of <laughs> the painful problem that most of us experience in business. And so as a leader, what you can do to um, make better use of people's time um, and really produce exceptional results through meetings. So, and I like how it's, he does talk a little bit about the energy aspect of meetings, not too much, uh, I'd like a little more, but what it ends up doing is as a result of using his very, very tactical and easy to implement suggestions is how to, uh, how to run meetings, uh, it, it infuses energy back into the workplace. So I think that's another reason why, yes, very tactical, but it's a way to bring back some heart and some soul into business. That's my second book. Nice. Well, on the I just want to talk a bit about that book. Like for me, in real quick terms, people will say, "Oh, they dread the meetings because there are too many meetings." <laughs> and and no, but there 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 oh, lies I, the, I, there, but I, therein I, lies the problem. And then so for me, it's too many meetings, the improper people in the meetings because there are some people that absolutely need to be there. And there's some people that really don't need to be there and, and meetings n not staying on point. It's like, we're talking about the gifts of imperfection by Brene Brown. Okay. Very impactful book. This book like was huge and I love Brene Brown and this book was beyond impactful for, for me as an individual and it helps and it helped me out in the business sense and just in personal life. It was, it's just a great book. But going back to the tie, tie it all in with the business, if we're talking about this book and that's what the meeting's about, why in the heck are we talking about Junior's baseball game and we get totally off tangent and then all of a sudden a half an hour meeting turns into an hour meeting because we spent 15 to 20 minutes talking about Junior's baseball game, which has no prevalence to what we're doing. Yes, it's nice to catch up and do all that, but guess what? You can do that at lunch. You can do that on Ooh, your own personal I disagree time. on that. I disagree you know, on that. I think that's a critical piece, it, but there has to be built into the agenda. But the, you do exactly. need five. The first five minutes needs to be actually connect as human beings. That, that, okay, that's fine. But how many times have we been part of a meeting when we're 15, 20 minutes in and somebody talks, brings up something that has zero to do with what you're in there for and, you, and everything gets sidetracked and then you walk out of the meeting and you're like, what the heck was that all about? So, I, so yes. So either if this sounds like your own manager, if this sounds perhaps maybe like you as a person who leads meetings, there's three P's I have to share with you. Purpose, process, people. What's the purpose of the meeting? What's the process for achieving the purpose? So what are the steps? How will we actually achieve that? And you have the right people in the room. Oh, get this book, Death by Meeting. All right. <laughs> Which is really good. Yeah. Okay. What's next on yours? Uh, well, no, I did, I did talk about um, The Gifts of Imperfection by Brene Brown. Um, I'm, I'm sure everyone who listens to your program knows who Brene Brown is. Um, and if they don't... I, just she had she had a special on Netflix, um, and just go watch it. And <laughs> if you if you don't have Netflix, go to YouTube and just tap in Brene Brown and just watch 
anything of hers, it's on YouTube. She's brilliant. Um, and she, especially for um, being a man, it's, it's really important because there's this, I don't know, this incredible wrong ideology that men are strong and don't show their emotions and blah, 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 blah. Where she's saying, no, you have to embrace that and embrace being vulnerable and showing that. And it, it will have a different impact on women and it'll have a different impact on men mm -hmm. um, reading that book. And um, I've always been a big voice for men out there to say, listen, this tough guy crap is exactly what it is. It's crap. Um, if the world had more compassion, if the world had more, you know, vulnerability, I think we'd be in a better, better place. But I mean, that's a whole other topic. Um, but yeah, um, but quickly, I think I, I, I'm just, I won't get into too much detail, but the, the other two, I just want to quickly say show. Uh, Wait a second though, I have three, I've got three left. So can I jump uh, in? Go, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead then. Okay, yeah, okay. Uh, along the similar vein of what you're saying before you started to talk about the, the books that you chose, the rest of mine are very much, per, hmm, not personal development, but soul development books. I guess that's personal development. I've spent 20 years learning my profession. And it was missing, that's the head stuff. And so the heart stuff has been neglected a little. And so, what? I'm just saying this is, this is the thing that needs to be changed because if you want to be successful in business, it's not all the head, it's the soul, it's the heart. That, I know, it, that's my leadership book, honey. <laughs> head and heart. <laughs> Where have you been the last year? <laughs> working for LHR. <laughs> so um, <laughs> these two books have been really, really pivotal in helping me to access that. So I can actually share the head stuff that I've learned in a human way. Okay. Right? I work in HR, leadership is HR, coaching is HR, you know, and the humanity has been lost. I was searching for years for the human human resources and little did I know it really wasn't there. Um, and so this, these kinds of books, this next one, The Artist's Way. Great book. Uh, is one of those tools that has helped me to regain access to that part of me that is creative, is joyful, is fun, might be funny, and it's not been easy work. And so, um, yeah, I'm looking for a quote in the book. Um, well, you, while you're looking for a quote, I'm just going to say yeah. this, is that if anything, and in this particular thing, the stuff that the artist way asked you to do, if it was easy, why would anyone bother doing it? And I think that's a thing or a cop out, so to speak, for a lot of people, it's like, or there's sh oh, sorry let me let me backtrack let me backtrack they're always shocked that the work that went into it and it's like well yeah because it it takes it takes takes work takes takes some energy takes some time as you know what you know what you make me think of the um the saying a labor it whatever it might be is a labor of love yeah leadership is a labor of love yes you do your work right in a really right. genuine and authentic and impactful way. It's a labor of love. No argument there. Right. That just dawned on me. So I've got, I found a quote. I just need to share. So um, if you want to work on your art, work on your life. That's another way of saying that in order to have self-expression, we must first have a self to express. Yep. So that's the kind of work that these types of books do. 
the, yeah, uh, and, 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 unlock the, the, you know, again, the humanity, but I really thought that that quote was a good one. Sorry about you. No, that, no, that's a great quote. And, and, and this is where I think the magic of what I've been devol getting into is these biographies and autobiographies is it's, I feel like I'm sitting beside the person having coffee and, the, and it's like speaking to someone and they're just like oozing all this knowledge to you these life lessons, these business lessons for you to just be that sponge and absorb. And um, because all our lives, we're, we're told things like, you do it this way, don't do this, blah, 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 follow these rules. And the how-to books are, are exactly like that. But there's something different about hearing a life story or life experience that actually makes what we want to do in business. It just changes things. It's a game changer. It just opens your eyes to humanly go through something rather than be a machine and just be all black and white and, you know, why robotic and transactional. Robotic. Yeah. 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 Okay. So what's another, what's another book you have there? Um, I think for me, I, the last, I mean, Jackie Robinson was an autobiography. Um, I read, uh, two biographies, um, uh, recently, not recently, but a while ago, and I felt they were amazing. Um, and I think I probably have taken some of their life experience and kind of mixed it in and how I deal with people, um, especially clients and others, people I just connect that are not business related. Um, and I take their, what they've been through and kind of interwoved it into my makeup now. Um, and one of them is Alicia Keys, uh, More Myself. Um, it's, if, if people only know Alicia through her music, um, this will definitely open doors that you should really understand about her. She's very raw and open. Um, and it just made, it made, it makes her seem more real. If that even comes to. Oh my gosh. Absolutely. I liked um, one of the many things I also liked about that book. Cause you and I read that um, close proximity uh, was she gives examples about how she made tough decisions. Yes. Or she talks through the tough decisions that she made through her career that could have totally, that could have made it bottom out and her yeah. not be a presence in the music industry anymore. She did it anyway, because that's what she knew was right for her. Yeah. Um, because I think it's always, we hear a lot of arguments from people about um, towards those who have a lot of money or who are really famous saying, oh, well, it's easy to do that when you're famous. Nope, nope. It, it starts when they weren't famous. It starts when they weren't famous. Yeah, well, the thing is, and we've, we've, people have heard this before. It's like, they think the late Kobe Bryant, when he came and joined the league and was lighting it up in the NBA and what have you, people are like, oh, he was a bona fide superstar. Well, no, he doesn't just, just come out there. It's the blood, the sweat, and the tears that went in and all the practicing, all the missed shots, you know, like, games lost and it was on his hand to shoot that winning basket and they lose still, right? But they don't see all that part. All they see is the glory and the championships and what have mm -hmm. you. And, and uh, you know, I think the Alicia Keys book, if you are a brand new business owner or a new entrepreneur and you're really starting out, like you're fresh, fresh starting out on something, read this book. Read it. Because... I think you will walk away with something and how Alicia, to your point, the hard decisions. Um, and I think you will be able to parallel, parallel them into your, into your world. And quickly, the last one was um, Karamo Brown, who was a gentleman who's on the show, um, Queer Eye, which again is a program people can find on Netflix. Um, it's, uh, I felt that Karamo was, you know, he's such a soft-spoken man, and he has such great insight. And um, it's it was really interesting. I really felt that uh, 
he was hanging beside me and chit chat would tell me, you know, how it is, so to speak. And uh, yeah, so I, again, these are people's life stories, but I can guarantee you 100% if you're open and you listen and you truly read and take in what you're reading, um, it will have a huge benefit to you, not only to you personally, but it will also help you in the business world. Love that. I, I, you read that first and at your recommendation, I, I read that also and echo everything that, that you just, um, that you just shared. So I'm cognizant of our time and getting close to the top of the hour, but I think we can do, I think I can do this quickly. So, um, two more that I have, one is the untethered soul by Michael Singer. Um, the journey beyond yourself is the, is the subtitle. Oh gosh, where do I start with this one? My biggest takeaway for this, from this book was my, um, one's need to be able to take a step back in a stressful situation and observe the feelings and thoughts you're having instead of being the thoughts and feelings you're having. Right. Huge. Yeah. yeah. Huge. Because it's only from there then are you able to make the right choice. Otherwise, you get wrapped up in all the emotions. Well, then you, well you, as you said, we hear this all the time. We end up making an emotional decision. And yeah. if we step back you, you, and just, as to your point, look at it and then come forward, you'll make a better decision. And I think intuitively, people know that to be true. People also will hear, like, intellectually, they know that to be true. Well, people but how notice, people, but how many people, people do it? Driving, sorry, people are driving a car and notice stop at a stop sign, but they still roll through it. That's right. So this is an amazing, an amazing book to really help you understand how to do that. Because I think if more of us were able to do that, we'd be living in a much, a much different world. And then finally, I too have a Brene Brown book. How could I not have a Brene Brown book? Um, and because I focus on leadership, I wanted to bring this one forward because I love all of her other books too. But this one in particular, because she has done what I am doing in my book which is blending the head and the heart. She does it in a very different way than I am currently doing. But it's the first book, and I'm sure there are others, but it's the first business book that I personally have read that has very tactical, tangible tips, strategies, and tools to implement in the workplace that actually create better human experiences for both the leader as well as the people they're doing things with. They're not doing unto others that are doing with. And so um, the subtitle of this is Brave Work, Tough Conversations, Whole Hearts. I mean, that says it all. So any leader, all leaders need to read this book. I think there's extra credibility the fact that she is um, a, pr a professor at a university in Dallas, Houston. Yeah, I know Houston is in Dallas. Houston, I believe. Yeah. Um, it's just exceptional. So, yeah. So those are our books. That was kind of fun. Yeah, you, she's a, she's a professor at the University of Houston. Thank you. Really. Thank you. So not only does she have this massive following due to the amazing books that she has written um, and a lot of success in being able to teach these books through facilitators that she has taught and hired to do all of that work, her main focus is still on research and students. And so I think it's really, she's not strayed from her core. She is just using, yeah, so kind of looping back to what we started out with. She's not strayed from her core and has just supplemented how her core offering and like the how she shares her knowledge and learning. Um, yeah, so the how has changed, but the core has not. Core remains. Love it. All right. Any final thoughts? Like we've gone all over the place, Jay. Yeah, we did. Any final thoughts that you'd like to leave our listeners with today? Um, I just, I just think that, um, I, and I do appreciate you pushing me out into the light, so to speak. Um, mm -hmm. It's, uh, I think it's super important that people understand that um, the one way of doing something is not always the right way of doing something, and that falls in a lot of things. 
we just kind of tied it in with books. Like people say, well, why in the heck would I read an autobiography on a baseball manager? What the heck is that going to do for me? I hate baseball. But I'm telling you the 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 richness of these people's experiences will will positively help you out um whether it's personally or more on a business side of it it will help you and i think i think people need to start looking at books a bit differently rather than always say how to get rich how to do this 10 steps for this um you know and everything in bullet point and numbers life is not all numbers it's important and it, and it does and it does help financially or whatever you're trying to do but there is a lot more to it and um you know i just i just think it's really important that people understand that and also lastly don't do everything on your own you can you, you can get far but if you really want to reach the highest peak where you think you can get to make sure you surround yourself with the right people and you know as we talked about earlier on the social media, make sure you get the right people helping you out because with that, you will achieve the goals that you have written out that you want to achieve. So surround yourself with the right people. It doesn't matter what walk of life or what season of life you are in, in business or otherwise, surrounding yourself with the right people is always, always, always good, sage advice. Thank you so much, Jay, for spending this time with us. Um, I know that your website is under construction. Where can people best connect with you and get a hold of you if they have questions, insights, or insights around, um, insights to share around this show or social media, or want to hire you for some support? How can they best reach you? So if you want to check out what I'm doing, um, just go to see me on LinkedIn, Jay Andrews at LinkedIn. Um, the other thing is, is that if you need to reach out to me, my calendar uh, address is on there. Um, there's a PDF file that you can just click on, gives you a breakdown of what I do, what Ripple Effect does. Um, and then, yeah, just book, book an appointment. Or if you want, just directly email me at Jace R. Andrews. That's J A S E R A N D R E W S at gmail.com. And um, love to help you out. Love to chit chat. Awesome. I will include those connection points in the show notes and check them out, my friends, if you don't know Jay. And once again, Jay, thank you. No, Truly, thank you. It was, it, was a, it was a pleasure as always. And of course, thanks to you too for tuning into, into today's show. Feel free to contact me directly at louisehreed.com where you can find my connection points and coordinates if you have any questions. I want to talk about coaching, speech, speaking, oh, speaking, speaking of speaking, speaking engagements or leadership coaching. Finally, let's all live inspired, grow together and be brave, be bold and be happy. Until next Tuesday, I'm Louise H. Reed wishing all of you an amazing day. Goodbye, friends.